Welcome to this week's edition of The Blitz. Today's show will feature special teams coordinator and running backs coach Kermit Bugs, as well as kicker Chad Kristen. And as usual, Sean Mulcahy will be here for Mulcahy's matchup. So thanks for tuning in. And now, The Blitz. It's that time again. Welcome back, Sean. Thanks for having me, Emily. All right, this past weekend, the Huskies fell to Maryland 32-21. to They did get up early on the Terps, and they were down by just three at halftime, but they just couldn't take advantage of the opportunities to get that win. What is your assessment of how this game played out? Well, give credit to Maryland. I thought they did a really good job on all sides of the ball. Uh, UConn's defense looked much better as opposed to what they did against Towson. You know, they had some turnovers, which was good. Um, they had some good gang tackling situations. There were some blitzes, but I'd like to see some more sacks and some more uh, defensive plays in the secondary, you know, batted down balls. The offense was nice. Chandler Whitmer got in a nice rhythm, but the running game is still a little suspect, and we need to pick that up. The offensive line's getting a little bit better, and uh, I think you're seeing progression in the right areas for this team to succeed against Michigan. The offense showed glimpses of being really great, but they did show their weakness up front. Chandler got sacked five times for the second game in a row, and the running backs, like you said, just accumulated 70 yards. But then Chandler threw for 349. Why so one-dimensional? That's kind of the name of the game nowadays. You see that in uh, the NFL and college. You know, there's a lot more to be done with with a spread offense. If you can get the ball downfield, it's more opportunities to make plays, uh, get the defense on their heels. We also talk about space makers and playmakers. Makers, and that's what you try to do, and that's what can happen in passing attack with a spread offense. You, you're going to get as many playmakers on the field as you can. You know, not everyone has a tight end like we did last year, Ryan Griffin. So it's tough to get that. So you try to substitute in a receiver or a running back. Uh, but also, you know, look at the running backs to help out on the blitzing and the uh, protection for Chandler as well, because it's not all on the offensive line. And I'm sure this offensive unit will work hard to get it right this week. Well, the defense made some really big plays. They forced four Maryland turnovers, but they also gave up some big plays as well. Maryland's quarterback, C.J. Brown, and his offense put up over 500 total yards. What was it about Maryland that was just too much for our defense to contain? Explosion. They had so many good uh, weapons on the outside or the inside where they could really make explosive plays, uh, eat up a lot of yards at once, keep the defense out there. I'll give credit to UConn's defense. They fought tough. They had the turnovers. You know, you can't go out there and not turn the ball over and blame it on no one. UConn affected that. But uh, Maryland's offense was just too much in the long run. They had a very sound package for the UConn defense, and that showed. And a few of the players said after the game that they felt like they were always in it, uh, that they were never out of the game, and, and there was a lot more energy than they had against Towson. Did you see that as well? And, and how do you feel like that will um, give us hope as we move forward in the season? You always got to think that way, and every player should take it one step at a time. Uh, after what happened with Towson, I'm sure all the UConn players were very jacked up and excited, and they never thought they were going to lose an opportunity. Uh, and they probably always thought they were in the game, and that's the way it should be. And that only gets stronger as the season progresses. So when you have a team coming in like Michigan, it's a great opportunity. So bottom line, anything can happen. Anything can happen. All right, well, thanks so much for your insight, Sean. We'll see you a little bit later in the show. Thank you, Emily. All right, now let's take a look at highlights from UConn versus Maryland. Brown gives to the fullback. He's hit in the backfield. Straight drop, look, screen pass. Davis has it, has a blocker to the Maryland 45, to the 40, to the 35. The give is to McComb, straight up the middle, to the three, to the two. It looks like he's got the first down, they push the pile, touchdown! Has time, looks, fires up field, he's got a man wide open, Fox! Maryland showing blitz, they rush for Whitmer has time, throws up field, he's got Davis at the 32 to the 30. Looks up the field, now throws, he's got a man wide open, it's caught by Fox at the 30 to the 25. To right in front of the goal post, Christian's kick is good. Long to the right, option left with Brown. Pitches it back, it's fumbled. It's loose on the turf, it's still free. And UConn looks like they have it and they do. Ross starts to sweep to the left. 
Runs through a tackle, runs through another one at the 25. Fumbles the football, it's loose on the ground, and it's falling on by Tymere Brown. Get the Huskies within seven, high snap. Wagner gets it down, and the kick is good. The shotgun, Whitmer looks to throw. Over the middle, Phillips wide open at the 45, to the 50. It's a foot race. Jack to the 35, to the 25, to the 15, to the five, and he is in. Touchdown, Connecticut. John Green to the right. And the pass is complete to Davis. It's time for Coach's Corner here with special teams coordinator and running backs coach Kermit Bugs. Thanks for being on the show today, Coach. Glad to be here. Thank you. All right, first let's break down a little bit of this run game. For these past two games, the run game's been a little bit stalled, not putting up the kind of numbers that I know you guys want. Coach Pascaloni said after the game that the running backs aren't just just aren't having those holes that they want to find. When when things aren't falling for them, what do you say to your players to, to get them going? Well, I just try to tell them to stay patient. Um, they got to make sure they're understanding what's going on in front of them. Um, we got a lot of inside stunts last week, so we got to make sure that we find those proper angles to hit the holes that we, we're looking for. Now, you know, Coach said there are some holes that weren't there, but there were some holes we missed too. So you just got to keep working, getting in the film room and seeing those uh, mistakes and try to adjust and go from there. And you've been coaching football for 14 years now, but this is your first year as special teams coordinator. What have you liked about taking on that role, and what have your challenges been taking that over? Well, you know, as a high school head coach, I did everything. So, you know, as you say, this is my first year as a special teams coordinator. But a high school coach, I had to pretty much do that too. But, and also, I had to kick off coverage at, at Penn State. So, it's some adjustments to it. But uh, being involved um, with everything has been a joy. You know, these guys are great to work with. Uh, we've done some good things and we've done some bad things. But we got to keep getting better and keep going forward. Later in the show today, we will have kicker Chad Kristen on the show, one of your guys, a member of the kick squad who always has some very fun antics. Are you able to go out and have some fun with those guys while uh, they're doing whatever they do on the sideline? <laughs> uh, definitely. You know, we have some, uh, some funny moments amongst each other, but uh, just try to keep them in, involved. You know, kickers have to stay loose. Uh, so much pressure on, on those guys when they go out there and perform and do their things that, we do, that they do, you know, so they got to stay a little loose. I like to see it. All right, and coaching at Penn State for 10 years, coaching in against the Big Ten teams within the Big Ten, you've played against Michigan many times. Can you share some experiences going up in those big-time games, big-time moments, and what Husky fans can expect playing a team like Michigan? Well, you know, you know, Michigan's going to come, and they're going to bring, you know, everything that a Big Ten team brings. They bring toughness. Uh, they're going to bring size. Um, they're going to bring a lot of crowd. Uh, so those are the things that Husky fans can be prepared for. But uh, we've had some great games over the years that I've been involved with. You know, 2005 when they beat us at the last second down in Michigan. And then the years of Rich Rod where we beat them pretty badly when he was there. But uh, there's been some good games and some good times. You know, Coach Fred Jackson is still there, one of the guys that I, I've known for a while. And um, so it's going to be interesting to go and compete against those guys. You know, those wing helmets come in. We just got to make sure that that doesn't make us fearful. Well, definitely be a fun show for all the Husky fans to see. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the show today, Coach. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right, now let's head out to campus for a little Know Your Foe. For this week's edition of Know Your Foe, we are here in the UConn Student Union to find out how much this campus knows about our next opponent, the Michigan Wolverines. What team is UConn playing this weekend? Michigan. 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 They're playing Michigan. Michigan Wolverines. Michigan Wolverines. What is their mascot? Wolverines. Uh, the Wolverines. The Wolverines. The Wolverines. Wolverines. What are their colors? Um, blue and yellow. Yellow. Oh, maize and blue. Um, blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. What are their colors? Blue and yellow. Very good. Do you know the word that they use for their yellow? No, I have no idea. I guess gold, maybe? I don't know. It's maize. maize. That's kind of weird. Maize and gold. Maize is essentially gold. But maize and blue, then. <laughs> do you know what their battle cry is? <laughs> no. I don't even know what a battle cry is. I'm assuming something to do with the Wolverine, so... Like a rar? Let's go Michigan? I don't know. And what would you say are Michigan's biggest battle cries? Go blue, and then uh, they sing the victors. Okay. Ho hopefully, not very often doing our game. 
hail to the victors? Um, go Big Blue. Go Wolverines, go. I'm sure that they say that at some point. What is the nickname for their stadium? The Big House. The Big House. The Big House. Big Blue. <laughs> Big house? Big house. Big house. The big house? The big house. The big house. What conference are they in? Big Ten. Big, Big Ten? <laughs> big Ten. <laughs> what conference are they in? The Big Ten. The Big Ten? Big Ten. They're in the uh, Big Ten. What state is it in? Michigan. Michigan? <laughs> Was that a trick question? Michigan. What state is it located in? Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> that, that really, is that a question? Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I almost got tripped up there. Detroit. Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. I did not <laughs> edit that out. Michigan. That was a trick question. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where is it located in Michigan? Ann Arbor. That one I know, Ann Arbor. I don't even know anything about Michigan except the lake. Uh, Ann Arbor. Where in Michigan is it located? Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Is it Ann Arbor? It is Ann Arbor. Can you name either or both of the NFL starting quarterbacks who played at Michigan? Tom Brady. Uh, Chad Henney. Hmm. Is it him? Wow. Tom Brady and uh, Chad Henney. Give me the first name. Starts with a T. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady and Chad Henney, but that was only because I heard someone else say it, so I don't want to get too much credit. Tom Brady. Starting NFL quarterbacks. Um, yeah, can I, hang on, this is going to take a while. Tom Brady, but he didn't start for Michigan. And then, no, no, no. Are you going through all 32 yeah, teams right I'm now? I'm going through all 32 teams. Ch is Chad Henney starting right now? Really? Okay, Chad Henney. There you go. He started last weekend, so we'll count oh, it. it. Here's a tricky one. Okay. What U.S. president was a national champion on the Michigan football team? Was it Ford? Yeah. I know that. Air Force One. Best movie ever. Gerald Ford. All right. So far, you're batting 1,000. <laughs> I'm going to go with Teddy Roosevelt. No, but I suppose that's as good of a guess as any. Bill Clinton? I don't know. Um, probably not Obama. Jimmy Carter? Abraham Lincoln. George Bush. Ford. And how did you know that so quickly? I don't That's just like one of those weird facts that I just knew somehow. Okay, lastly, who best wore number 79 at Michigan, particularly in the late 80s? <laughs> I don't know who wore it after me, so uh, uh, maybe me. Uh, but it was, uh, I don't know, there was one good year in there and, and the other one I was injured. So uh, somebody else probably wore it with, uh, had a little bit more longevity. But in the late 80s, probably would be me. That's right, Husky fans. Our very own athletic director, Ward Manuel, was a standout for Michigan football. Thanks so much for being a part of Know Your Foe today. Thank you. We have Kick Squad member Chad Kristen on the show with us today. Thanks for joining us, Chad. Thanks for having me. Now, being a fifth-year senior, you certainly have a unique perspective on your team. A little bit of a rough start to the season. What is your take on the team so far? You know, we go out every day and we prepare the same every week. Um, it's just a matter of little things executing here and there in um, all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. But um, we just got to continue to get better every week. and. Uh, we just gotta, as seniors and stuff, we gotta have leadership, we gotta have focus, and you know, I said it to the media before, us fifth year guys have been a part of winning teams here, and we know what it's like to play teams like Michigan, and we just gotta go out and, you know, with focus and execution, and hopefully, you know, show up this week and win. Speaking of showing up against Maryland, you were called for a blocking below the belt penalty, a penalty not very many kickers get called for. Were you just itching to get downfield and make some plays? You know, I usually take pride in my tackles because, you know, I have like, I'm close to double digits here, and uh, that one I was not proud of. Um, it was a spare of the moment kind of thing. You know, I was just trying to make a play, and apparently you can't take out the lead blocker, and I didn't know you could block on when you're on trying to make a tackle. It was just a mass confusion, but, you know, my job is this week I might work with Coach Hooley this week, get some form tackling in, and 
hopefully uh, don't have to make play, uh, tackles like that again. I like it, getting, getting some toughness from yeah. Coach Uli. All right, well, in doing what you're supposed to be doing on the field, you've been so consistent. Um, no, We don't need to remind you, the game against Temple, 0-4, but since then, you've gone 10 for 10 through the uprights, been so consistent. Was that game kind of a turning point for you, and, and how have you kind of focused and, and been able to be so consistent since then? It really was a uh, challenge for me, obviously. I think it prepared me mentally for the second half of that season last year and then coming into the season I just had confidence coming off a streak last year and you know I'm just trying to continue that that was my job when I was recruited is come here and kick field goals and make as many as possible and that's my philosophy when I go out I don't worry about streaks or anything like that I just go out and try to get three points for our team and the kick squad has always been known as the jokesters keeping things light um, but when it comes to game time how would you describe your mental state your preparation um, as you get ready for your role yeah you know all the jokes aside at that point you know Bobby Puyol the young kicker out here um, he came up to me and said, man, like right before you went out, I tried to come up to you and, you know, say like, oh, well, like hit it through the uprights or something like that. He gave me advice and I literally did not under, I did not even acknowledge he existed because, you know, my focus is, is at the task at hand, you know. I don't want to be like distracted by anybody. So I just go out there and, you know, with full focus, I don't worry about anything anybody else is saying in the crowd or anything. All right, we like it. It's clearly paid off. Yeah. We can see the results on the field. Next up, we take on Michigan. A lot of hype around this game. We've added seats to Rentschler Field. We're playing prime time. With all that excitement surrounding this, what are you looking forward to most about coming out against Michigan? Just the, you know, just have all the guys on our team just have the understanding of the magnitude of the game and the opportunity that it presents itself, you know. Not a lot of teams... Um, have this situation and stuff like that, especially at home. Usually, you know, the team goes to that big place and plays, but, you know, having the opportunity of a team like this to come to Rentschler Field, um, we just got to, you know, soak it all in and live in the moment because you're never going to get that back, and it's just a great opportunity. And it's, I mean, we're all fortunate to be in the position to, you know, go out there and play the game. Yeah, it certainly will be exciting. All right, now, so we've seen your composure on the field. Now comes the real test. We're going to play a game that we call Three and Out. How it works is I will ask you three questions about yourself and you answer the very first thing that comes to mind. Then we'll do it again three and out with your teammates. You ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. First question. Besides kicking field goals, what is your best talent off the field? I'd have to say cooking. Okay. Very nice. What is your go-to dance move? I'd have to say the shopping cart, you know, pick stuff up, put it in the basket like that. So. Oh, well, you've got it down. That's really nice. Okay. Right now, what is your go-to song on your iPod? I'd have to say Suddenly Summer by Armin Van Buren. Great song. Okay, cool. Three and out on the other side. Which teammate spends the most time playing video games? Gotta be Kevin Friend. The kid is just glued to the TV every time I'm around his apartment. It's unbelievable. It's, he's good at it, but it's just a lot of, consumes a lot of time with that. Okay. If you were stuck on a deserted island with one teammate, who would you most want to be there with and who would you least want to be there with? Most, definitely Tyler Bullock, you know, we've been roommates for four years and get along really well. Okay. The opposite side of that, I'd say I wouldn't want to be on an island with Kevin Friend because, I mean, he, he'd probably try to eat me if there was no food or anything. So, linemen, they're hungry. So, yeah, not Kevin. Okay. Okay, that was, that was a good rationale. Uh, what is one thing that you want Husky fans to know about fellow Kick Squad member Cole Wagner? He's a cartoon character. He is so animated, and the kid is just has an unbelievable personality. He's, he's a cartoon. Okay, very nice. Well, thanks so much for being on the show today. We always have fun when the kick squad's around. <laughs> thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, it. now let's head back to Mulcahy's matchup. All right, Sean, it's time to break down our next opponent, the Michigan Wolverines. Now they're 3-0, and beating Central Michigan, Notre Dame, and just barely beating Akron last week. What did those games that they've already played tell you about what kind of team we're going to see? Well, hopefully they're a little banged up. You know, they've, they've played one extra game than us, so that, that, you know, bumps and bruises could help our situation. But you know they're going to be ready for the game. They almost lost and should have lost to Akron last week. It was an unbelievable game if you got a chance to see it. But you know their coaching staff and Coach Hoke are going to have that team prepared and not going to let them rest on their laurels thinking that, you know, UConn's not – tough or anything like that, it's going to be a tough game for both sides. I think there's going to be a lot of fight. And, you know, being prime time on ABC at 8 o'clock, that's, that's really going to help everyone. Both sides of the balls will be very jacked up. 
And Michigan's Devin Gardner is a dual threat quarterback. He's averaging 235 passing yards per game and 81 rushing yards. But he has thrown six interceptions in just three games. How do you see our defense matching up? Well, he likes to take risks, and I love that because if he's going to take risks, he's going to get outside of the pocket. So hopefully we can get some linebackers or ends to make a play in the backfield, a TFL or a sack. But also downfield, uh, it's going to give our secondary opportunities to make some plays, especially OB playing over the top and either a cover two or a cover three. Uh, you know, Taylor Mack will probably come up big being a senior guy, having a lot of experience. So with those risks he takes downfield, it's only going to give us an opportunity to make a play. And Michigan's defense has tallied only five sacks this season, a stat I'm sure Chandler Whitmer is very happy to hear. But their run defense has been stellar. They give up just 80 rushing yards per game. What should the Huskies be looking for uh, in regards to their defense? Well, they shouldn't give up on the run just because, you know, the opposing team has good stats. You always want to establish that run. Uh, and UConn has not really done that yet this season, so I think they'll give a good fight up front. The offensive line seems to be getting better week to week. Uh, Lyle McCombs is healthy. He's doing a good job. Martin Hippolyte looks good. Maybe even see Max D. Lorenzo get in there. But then again, Chandler Whitmer has had great connection with Jeremy Davis and Shaquem Phillips, so I'm sure they'll open it up again and throw the ball downfield and score a lot of points. And this Wolverine team is a young team. This is their first road trip of the season, and they're 4-5 and five on the road under Coach Hoke. What does that tell you about their traveling here to Connecticut? It's one of those things where it could work against you since they haven't had a good record on the road. It's almost as if UConn could be going into a hornet's nest at their home stadium in Rentschler. Uh, you know, almost losing to Akron, I, I can't tell you or stress enough how much a coach will prepare their team to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm sure they're having a very difficult uh, week of practice, and they'll probably come in here pretty ready. All right, and here's another game with a lot of hype. We've added seats to Rentschler Field. We're playing on primetime TV, and we're playing the number 15 team in the country. What do we need from these Huskies come kickoff? Oh, you need a lot of excitement. You got to start off strong. You got to score right away, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown. Uh, obviously, you want the touchdown, but you got to score on the first drive. Defensively, you got to do a three and out. First, stop them right away so they, they second guess themselves. And special teams really need to be sound. You can't have any mistakes, you can't have any missed assignments. Players got to stay in their lanes on punt and kickoff. And on return, you got to get to your designated assignment so you can get a good block on the, uh, the, the coverage team. Well, the Huskies will take on Michigan Saturday, September 21st. The game will be on primetime ABC at 8 o'clock. And, of course, you can always listen on WTIC News Talk 1080. For those of you going, be really loud, get in the stadium on time, and make it live up to RG3's claim that Rentschler is the loudest college stadium in the country. Thanks for tuning in to The Blitz with Sean Mulcahy. I'm Emily Noonan for Huskies All Access. We'll see you out there.